Any cop can tell you that laughter is needed for the job. Sometimes it can be dark humor for dark times. We're going to talk about how a joyful heart can be good medicine for you. Stay tuned and learn more about it. Well, hello, everybody. Here we are for Remnant Revealed. What an absolutely awesome day. Hey, you're looking good, my friend. All back and refreshed, man. All back and refreshed. Well, Rick, it's great to be together again. And uh, as always, bringing life and liberty and happiness to people's lives. Wow. That's very official. Yeah. So yeah. you're back and refreshed? Yeah. Actually so practice what we preached. Yeah. So listen to this. For the f- This is embarrassing to admit. Oh, here it goes. So I'm going to confess something. Confession time. Holy. All right. Uh, my bride and I <laughs> went on our first vacation, actual vacation, time of just us for the first time in, we figured it up, eight years. Rick Snyder, shame on you. Can you believe that? I can because I know how fast you run. Yeah. And I mean, there's been times where we've been. <clears throat> I've been off work or just away from work. Right. right? I always say, when well, I, you work at home just like I do. We're well, not ever really beyond off work. that. So yeah. I always say when I take vacation time, that just means I'm working for free. Yeah. Just so, you know, you've got to burn time. You got to use it or lose it, but right. you, I'm still working. So explain that you got to use it or lose it. How, what do you mean by that? Well, for at least in our agency, <clears throat> and I'm sure it's the same for many agencies that, you know, we negotiate these contracts and we try to get time for officers to use for exactly what we talk about, to be able to recharge, stay healthy, have a good right. work-life balance, all those other things. Right. And then true to form as officers, but also officers working at agencies that are short-staffed and yeah. they can't let people take time off. Yeah. By the end of the year, a lot of agencies have a maximum carryover time, so a maximum amount of your t- benefit time that you can carry over. So you either have to use it or you lose it. Or you lose it. It goes away. And I've, uh, I've, I've done that one plenty of times. And so, uh, and a lot of times when, uh, we would take off, it would be to do stuff with family, go and serve in some capacity or something such as that. So like going up to Alaska, right? Right. Those kind of things. Yeah. You're going to Alaska, but you're going up there to serve and, and you're working, right? And so, right. or conferences, conferences. Everybody that believes that for leaders, conferences or vacation, you just. I'd like to you, find one. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. This was the first one. time in eight years that we said, just the two of us are going, and we're not going to serve other people and do all these things. We're yeah. going, and we're going to take a break. That's awesome. And so we did it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it was awesome. We That's uh, good. we did a little. Uh, beach getaway. Come on, man. So that was good. We uh, did the Gulf Shores area, which yeah. was awesome. I've never really done that before. Oh, really? you never been, been all over Shore? and done beach trips no and all that, but never done that. And hey, let me tell you something. They got something figured out, though. Yeah, they did. So I know. Some beautiful beaches. I hear so much of people going there. Yeah. Uh, so we did that for the first time. We had a great time. But I got a funny story to tell you. Okay. So we do Here all we this. Go. It's been eight years, right? Yeah. yeah. So we go. <clears throat> she probably wouldn't even want me telling this. So we go. Well, that's why you tell it. Day one. Day one, we go and down and we hit the beach. Now, me, I am not a, uh, I'm not like a, a tan real well kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, you burn, right? burn I burn, yeah. right? So uh, I'm big anymore on wearing the long sleeve fishing shirts or right. little hoods and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Which are great for me. They're thin. They, you know, they don't overheat yeah. you or anything. I use right? them fishing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we had a, an umbrella that was provided with the beach and the okay. beach chairs and all that, which was awesome. So we were under the umbrella the day one. We were only down there for probably about four hours, really just kind of getting acclimated right. and checking it Trying all out. Trying to relax. Yeah. yeah. It just that first day of decompressing a little bit, right? And so... We uh, we sat down there for about four hours. I thought I would listen to music or something like that. Didn't do any of that. Really? Just enjoyed the, the ocean, of the, the, water. Go- the golf, the that. Oh water. Gosh. It was a great time. Only about four hours. Um, <clears throat> and we said, hey, let's go and have dinner and, you know, just kind of get familiarized with the area and whatnot. So that's what we did. However, 
what I didn't realize was even though I was sitting up underneath the umbrella wearing my long sleeve shirt and all that, right. I didn't really pay attention to my legs and my feet. I was just getting ready to ask you if you burned the top of your feet. And brother? Oh, Rick. Uh, <laughs> four hours? And then as the sun moves, the umbrella shadow moves. Uh, Rick. I'm talking some of the... It was significant pain. That is like... That can be first, to, second, third degree burns. To the extent that... You didn't? I couldn't go back oh the rest my. of the trip. Oh, my. Now, we were right on the water, right? So you could look out our room and right. you were looking at the ocean. But I figured this out. I think what probably happened, which is that it was a blessing in disguise. As bad as it was, as painful. I'm talking like you stand up. You can hardly you stand up. Walk, yeah. You couldn't really walk. That's bad. Bad. Bad, bad. Not blistering, but just like a deep burn. That, that bluish Purple not not good. Red. Ooh, ooh. I know every dermatologist would be freaking out, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so not good. Not good at all. Um, and it, it really kind of put me down. But what happened was it forced me to just stay down. To be still. Relax. Read. Do all these things. Studied in the Word the whole time. Yeah. Um, all those things. So it really was actually is what got me to truly relax. You can't even use flip-flops or anything because uh, it hits across that top. Don't even. Mm. Oh. No. Oh. No, so. To get the knees too? Oh, Did yeah. Did it come up that far? Yeah. Oh, Rick. So I had a clear demarcation line from my oh, trunks Rick. down, and it was ah, bad. That's it was bad. very bad. So that's I'm just bad. really just now getting over it. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people that tan very easy. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I can withstand a lot. <clears throat> I, I, I now wear those fishing shirts with the hood. They need to make some pants out of that material. Yeah, That's because, what I needed. Because I'm Those like shirts I'm are fishing, like SPF 50 Oh, yeah, they, they protect yeah. you big time. Yeah. And I've got some that have the little strap for your yep. finger or your I thumb that, that covers the back of your hand. I mean, as you can see, I was out. I was going while you were, too. Uh, fishing mm -hmm. uh, on a fishing hard trip. to believe hard to believe but yeah and um but i've been burnt like that in years past where you just were out there too long fall asleep well that's what it was like and but you know why we we're there it really wasn't feeling that at all right felt fine thought it was up underneath the yeah. umbrella no and the missus she she her Feet got a little burned too, burn. and she she's the same way. She she tans yeah. quickly and all that, yeah. but it was just very intense, and you just didn't realize it, you know. Now I wear those clothing just to be careful of skin cancer sure. and stuff like sure, that. Sure, yeah, because the top of your ears, your nose, oh, brother, and all that. You know, you talked about fried. burning the top of your feet. Let Ooh, me tell you, as that's a painful, as a uh, follically challenged dude. <laughs> Uh, burnt, sunburned head. Oh, yeah. That's the worst. That's bad. That is the worst. Yeah. You and I have been on several uh, details where I've mm -hmm. seen you cover Fry your up. head with. Uh, I tell you where I normally get burnt the worst is in D.C. Really? At the memorial. Really? Yeah, because you're out. Because well, you're out there. That there's long. no shade. There's yeah. no nothing. And you're out there the entire day at the, on the Capitol grounds there. And it'll fry up. I always say, screen the bean. Screen the well, maybe, on there. maybe you can. Maybe you need to tan the bean before you go to DC. <laughs> so, can, can but I got great rest, relaxation. That's awesome. Um, I think I told you, but stayed in the word the whole time. And, you know, I you know I share this. Yeah, there's a, that's a great way of doing it. I kind of call it my monk time. Yeah, it's my time to just really study, chill out, but also I guess what they would say, meditate on the word. First and, thing uh, in the morning. Yeah, I do that. Go every out day. on your balcony, take a cup of that coffee. Was yeah, your Bible. Have the ocean, the view. Oh, your journal. Sit yeah. there. You're listening to that water crash. Uh, very few people walking back and forth. Some, you know, then every once in a while, I see a dog or something being walked. But that is some of the most peaceful, wonderful time. Yeah. To just talk to Jesus, have Him talk to you, read your Bible. Be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I'm with you, man. That's a great, you know. And had great that time. not happened, we would have been 
burning and churning. We would have been going every oh, yeah. which way. We would have, yeah. you know, where are we going to see doing tomorrow? all the where activities. What else yeah. you want to do? This, that, and the other. And mm-hmm. really, for the first time in such a long time, that was the way to do it. Yeah. I would have preferred without the burning. Sure. Um, but um, just stop and. Be and still. you know what we did a lot is we sat around and laughed. Did you really? Yeah, we played games. We're not big game people, right? But we did. You played uh, games together. I was the Uno champion once again. Come on, you know, and uh, dominoes and all those kinds of things. And yeah. we we did a lot of laughing together. And That's you know what? Awesome. There seemed to be a lot of uh, a lot of healthy things from that. Yeah. What uh, was the? Uh, where did you go eat? What kind of? Did you have some good food? You know, we'll get back to the laughter. So here, we were in a condo kind of a deal. So we. Before we went and did the beach, the very first thing we did was we went grocery shopping. And so we did a lot of our food, right? Oh, Thank God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did that uh, because, <laughs> because there was no yeah. getting out and going somewhere after <laughs> Now, does do you guys have vacation recipes that you only do on vacation? No. We have vacation recipes that Vicki, she loves to cook when we're on vacation because everybody, we do what you do. We're all together. We're in a condo, and she loves to cook. She makes these muffins, these brand muffins with nuts and raisins, and oh my gosh, they're our favorite. Mu- Those things disappear by the dozens mm. through the time we're on vacation. Yeah, gotta have those muffins. So we have little particular things that she has saved out over the years that she cooks <laughs> for vacation. And it's only for vacation. So us guys, you know, she's she finally has some more females in the family, but uh, she's been just a, bless her heart, been one little estrogen in a whole group of testosterone for years. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man, she, she feeds us good while we're on vacation. And then yeah. we'll go do like, a, you know, a nice restaurant once or twice while we're gone. But yeah, get yeah some we did seafood. a couple of places. But um, yeah. <laughs> the shuffle, the, <laughs> the, shu- the shuffle walk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shuffle walk. Yeah, but it was awesome. good. Yeah. And I think you know, uh, you know, it's one of the things that we talk to officers so much about, which yeah. is the value of taking a break, decompressing, sure. recharging your batteries, yeah. doing all those things. You know, and then oftentimes we find, like most people that are advocating to, for other people to do things, absolutely, we sometimes aren't doing it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, uh, I get in trouble for that too. So there's my confession. Yeah. You know, well, you mentioned laughter, and I want to share a couple of things on laughter. <clears throat> are you going to tell me laughter is biblical? Laughter is very biblical. Really? Oh, amazingly biblical. Uh, I'm going to read a scripture to you, Proverbs 17, verse 22 says this. Now, real quick, let's tell everybody about Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs. I find a lot of officers gravitate to Proverbs right away. Okay, so you got you got two books in the Old Testament. One is Proverbs, one is Psalms. They're right close to each other. I always love to say this. Proverbs teaches you wisdom of how to live with men, live life, live mm-hmm. with mankind. Mm-hmm. Psalms teaches you how to live and walk with God. So you always read a proverb a day, which is like a wise saying. These scriptures are wise sayings. And if you pay attention to them, they will help guide your life to blessing Well, I think that's and why, strengthen you. I think that's why coppers especially really gravitate to proverbs because it's how to walk with man. And they're dealing with man all and the time. it's practical. Absolutely. I mean, you, I think you remember the first time I really spent time in Proverbs, I kept saying, where the heck where is this Where was all been? this? Yeah. Where's all right? this been for all these years? And they're short. Yeah. So they're each, short. each verse yeah. isn't like the rest of the Bible where it, it it's, it, they're all real short. Yeah. So some of them are paired together. Yeah. Some of them are in triplets. Some of them are singular. Yeah. It's just a thought. It'd be like, you know, one of your mentors uh, sharing a wise statement thought of with the day you. Or, yeah. Thought of yeah. the day. Um, and then Psalms. Remember uh, that book, uh, Chicken Noodle Soup, Soup for Your Soul? Oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of, yeah. Right? I've used so a I'm lot I'm trying of to think it. of how people, to explain it to people if they haven't spent any time in there. It's kind of like that, where you just have one little short <clears throat> saying, why, wisdom, yep. words of wisdom. And, and God blessed King Solomon with this wisdom. So the reason it's a part of Holy Scripture 
is because King Solomon, when he became king, asked God for wisdom and understanding. That is right. And the Lord said, because you've asked me for that, not just riches and power, I'm going to give you riches and power. That's right. So it's canonized in scripture because we it's viewed as the word of the Lord because it actually came from God whom Solomon asked for it. And even other kings in his time period and queens verify this historically because they came just to sit in his presence and listen to him talk about life because of his great depth of wisdom and understanding. Right. What value it has. When you read them, it's so powerful in how to deal with humanity. So one of the verses here is a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. It's a like as principle. Mm -hmm. So like medicine does you well, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit. Like aloe on a sunburn. Like aloe on a sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> Sun cane, whatever. <laughs> Man, you'd be hosing down to that stuff. Oh, that's awful. <clears throat> but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. You know, they have found physiologically, medically. Say that again. A broken spirit. A broken spirit drieth up the bones. Where's this at in Proverbs? This is Proverbs 17, and it's verse 22. A merry heart. Doeth good like a medicine. If you go look at the word merry heart, it's a cheerful person, somebody who laughs, somebody who has uh, their their life's full of joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now, I'm going to contrast that because somebody right now said, well, that's ridiculous to even talk about a cop being that way because all we deal with is death and destruction and people's pain. Well, I and said in an episode all, or so ago, it seems like we're always talking about dark things. Right. Because that's what that's when officers are called for. You're, you're it's like that's exactly right. Hey, I just want to. I mean, people don't call. Us you're going to go to jail for, you know, for for calling nine one one improperly if you call and said, "Well, I'd really just love to see the happy officer if that's you could right. send a happy that's officer." Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm really feeling good today. I'd just like to have somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. You're going to jail for <laughs> false report. So, but a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth up the bones. They have literally found and determined that people who live uh, in a sourly attitude, sorely attitude, um, they're, they're depressed all the time. They're, you know, they're the Eeyores of life. <laughs> uh, they, they battle more arthritis and joint issues than people who are filled with joy and find ways to bring laughter into their life. Mm. So when I was looking at this, I was like, well, I'm going to share this with all of our cop friends because they need to understand there is a benefit to laughter. Don't make everything just about the traumas you deal with every day. Well, let me tell you, coppers do that all the time in a way. We call it dark humor, which is finding humor or laughing in the middle of very horrible horrible situation horrendous traumas yeah to the extent that officers sometimes Crises. even get in trouble yeah oh yeah for cracking a joke or doing whatnot in the middle of a tragic situation but what a lot of <clears> folks <throat> don't realize is that's a coping mechanism that's right it helps them deal with that issue for the officers that are witnessing things that really no human being should we witnessing. ever see god right. did not design us to be a part of that or see those things that we see on a daily basis that's right Yep. And you yep. think about, it, I mean, <laughs> the things that officers see. And, and <clears throat> you know, what's interesting is most people, when they find out somebody's an officer, they ask them about all those tragic things. Tell me about yeah, this. Tell me, tell me about that. Or, <clears throat> have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? And, you know, most officers don't engage in that. They don't want to talk about it. That's right. That's why we also say, too, one of the things with uh, body-worn cameras. Yep. You know, <clears throat> one, officers never thought those would – uh, come into being. Can I tell you an interesting story sure. on this? Sure. Yeah. So I was actually in a in a in a meeting w- uh, with um, the CEO of a large company, 
that at the time had was well known in other <clears throat> equipment pieces for law enforcement that came and presented to a group of us of folks that represent law enforcement and said, Hey, I got it. We've got this great new idea that will revolutionize the profession And they wanted to present it to us. And it was this concept of body worn cameras. Right. So they go through it. They we get, they get done and we say, Psh, that'll never happen. Now here's how they presented it to us. This is an excellent evidence collection tool. You can actually catalog things on the video that you're recovering evidence or you're processing evidence. Mm -hmm. It'll actually record and document people committing criminal acts when they're resisting law enforcement, when they're fleeing from you, you know, whatever. Um, And uh, um, you can even get statements, you know, uh, collect statements from people that are doing excited utterances and things such as that. And law enforcement said, that's great, but it'll never happen. And the reason why it'll never happen is because the public will never go for that because of privacy concerns. They right. don't want their incidents documented. They don't, mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? In they community don't want meetings, their, I brought that up too. They don't want their worst day captured yeah. for the public to be able to view. That's right. Right? And, the, and we weren't opposed to it. We supported it, but we knew the public would not support it. And the idea kind of faded away. Kind of, you didn't hear much more about it. Um, and then we had a couple of controversial, well-known national controversial incidents. And he come trotting back in to a meeting. And he said, boy, do I have a product for you. And their whole marketing strategy was completely changed. Yeah. Which was accountability for the police. This gives a balance for the citizens who fear the police. It captures police misconduct. Sure. You see the flip? It's just their tool. Yeah. And uh, they were off and running. Oh, yeah. And uh, so the, the point with that being one of the things that <clears throat> officers were concerned about with body-worn cameras, uh, vehicle, in-car cameras, those kinds of things, but especially body-worn cameras, uh, I remember saying this, we really feared that you were going to capture, the public was going to see for the first time the horrific things that our officers are exposed to. And oftentimes the reason why officers become officers is they want to stand that line so that other people don't see don't have to go the great that. underbelly of society. Yeah, I mean, you think about it now on social media pages. How many times can you scroll through and or YouTube and watch video after video after video of police video that show mm-hmm. horrific things? Shootings, people being shot, people being stabbed, people being ran over. Uh, brutalized, all these other things. We really don't want the public to see that, not because we're hiding something, but trying to shield the public right. from that mayhem. Which increases fear in the public's heart. That's exactly right. Because every one of those things that you watch, even if you're not... Listen, there's no way that anybody can say, when you go to see a scary movie and it scares you that your heart rate doesn't go up. That's right. That you get the same adrenaline dump that you... So when you sit and watch video after video after of car accidents, police chases, all these things, it affects you physically. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> it's the same way to... Here's the other thing that officers really um, don't like about all that is the number of officers killed on video Yeah. that didn't get played. Yeah. And the family, you know, we don't think about the family members. Now flip it. What about the family members? What about the family members of the people, the citizens that are on those videos? That's right. You know, and... um, Watching that over and over and over and over. That's exactly right. And so it's a very fine line and can be a very dangerous path to go down um, because of that. And and to your point, the health effects of that. Oh, All the cortisol drops that you're you're having in your system and whatnot hardens your arteries, uh, makes you very unhealthy. Um, And it's really self-induced. You're doing it to yourself. You know, it's normally that fight or flight response that's instantaneous with the adrenaline dump, right? But then you purge that out. But when you're just exposing it to yourself over and over and over again, you start to look like our policing profession, which usually die within at least 10 years of retirement yeah. because they're extremely unhealthy because of all the cumulative right. stress and exposure their bodies have suffered. It affects your vascular, your endocrine system, your kidneys, 
uh, diabetes, mm. high level of diabetes, high level of heart issues, blood vessel issues. Number one medical killers of officers <clears throat> is heart, heart, yeah. heart attacks, followed by diabetes, and usually in conjunction with one another. And arthritis. There you go. Because it affects your joints. Yep. And it eats. Inflammation. I- inflammation. Huge. And people don't, they, these are the things they don't know about or realize have an effect on first responders and police officers and those who are at these incredibly horrendous scenes. Yeah, they 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 learn how to mask or, or deal with the situation because they have to. It's the job. But it affects your body. It, so, there's no way to get around that. Well, and here in line <clears throat> is what we were originally talking about, which is why it is so important. That's right. I mean, think about what I just said. Yeah. First time in eight years. Eight years. Right? Yeah. And you got to stay healthy. You can't help people if you aren't healthy enough to help people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, well, and it's self, the counterbalance to right. all that stress exposure and everything else. That's right. Therein lies what this is saying, which is um, really the, I guess, the power of laughter. Yep. Right? This says a joyful heart, right? L- Being good medicine. Listen to this laughter strengthens your immune system. It boosts your mood, diminishes pain, protects you from damaging effects of stress. There you go. Nothing works faster or is more dependable to bring your mind and your body back into balance than good laughter. I thought that was a tremendous statement. Can you say it again? Nothing works faster or is more dependable to bring your mind and your body back into balance than a good laugh or a good laughter. So maybe that's why you see <clears throat> this quote-unquote dark, dark humor or wisecracks from officers in the middle of a tragic situation. That's right. Or they, they That just they said laugh. nothing works better. Nothing works better. <laughs> laughter relaxes the whole body. It's a good, hearty laugh, relieves physical tension and stress leaving your muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes after. Well, let me tell you something. You know, we're talking about officers, but, not, uh, you know, <laughs> let me tell Humans, you. Humans, uh, period. Uh, you know, people would would not believe, every every doctor or nurse that watches us will say amen, the crass and crude things that are said during surgeries, operations, oh, yeah. in the emergency room. So it's not just police officers. They have your guts in their hands. It's, it's human beings, <laughs> no, just, right? Yeah. That are doing things that are very, or seeing things that are very abnormal. Yeah. And what you just said is the quickest way to level yourself back out from that shock to your mind or right. to your heart is laughter. You just think about even surgeons, though they're precise and they do this every day for hours and hours and very hours. Very intense. Very intense. But they're still holding the life of a human being in their hands. That's right. And they're holding your guts in their hands. That's why a lot of times when officers call and say, hey, I'm going to have surgery next, you know, tomorrow, can you pray for me? Right? <clears throat> One of the things that we pray for are the medical staff, right? Yeah. That God grants them wisdom and discernment. That's right. In what they're doing to carry out his will of healing. You know, one of the things I keep saying to people is, don't forget, God is life and life more abundant. That's right. It's the evil one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief, like a thief. Yeah. Um, You know, sometimes people get that twisted. But for God to be able to do that, unless he's going to do it supernaturally through a miracle, which can happen, right? he's going to do that through other people. Sure. And so, you know, I think there's great value in praying that God grants them the wisdom and discernment they need to understand what his will is right. to provide the healing care that he wants to extend. And, and really, it's still your body that has to work to truly bring recovery about. That's right. He's still working through you. And the healing system he he put in you That's and right. created That's for right. man <clears throat> to bring about that healing, though doctors aid and work to do that, they'll tell you it's still your body we need to recover. Mm-hmm. We're going to help it, but you still are the one that has to have the recovery process take place for that total 
healing after surgery or well, whatever. And they don't want you just sitting around languishing in depression. That's right. During that healing process. L- laughter decreases stress hormones and increases immune cells and infection fighting antibodies. Hmm. Thus improving your resistance to disease. Laughter triggers the release of endorphins, the body's natural feel-good chemicals. You don't need anything but good laughter. I I remember our oldest son, uh, when he was a little boy, he loved to laugh. Maybe that's what's wrong with him now, but he (laughs) he loved to laugh. And he would run in with his arms up like this, and he would say, tickle me, Daddy, tickle me, and would just fall in the floor and and then jump up and go run off and play. He just he loved laughter. He loved that feeling of uh, of laughter. I, it was just always awesome. I, just watching him run across the the room, even in my mind with his hands up, saying "Tickle me, Daddy, tickle me," just brings to mind so many wonderful, joyful moments of life. And his laughter, his face was just light up the whole room. Well, just, and I can tell you, like, you know, we were saying for, you know, us as a couple, the great value in laughter together, laugh, laughing over nothing. Over right? nothing, that's right. Uh, where normally it's always stress, uh, not with the relationship, but external stress Yeah, that's weighing on your marriage, on your family, on your home, all those things. And so the opportunity just to not be doing anything, nothing serious, right. nothing life and death, and just enjoying one another and laughing all along the way. Great healing power. Great that. healing power. And uh, it's almost like this Bible knows what it's talking about. Laughter burns calories. So if you, <laughs> if you, need, to, if you need to lose some weight today, um, put down the, uh, the sugar and start laughing. It protects the heart. Let's think about what we talk about, about heart disease. Well, we just said a joyful heart. A joyful heart. It's, it's, it's also medically a fact that it improves the function of your arteries and blood vessels and increases blood flow. Well, if cortisol from stress can negatively affect those things, it yep. would seem that laughter could positively. And, and there's many other, you know, many other things. It, it actually staves off disease. A study in Norway found that people with a strong sense of humor are much healthier and outlive those who don't laugh as much. And it specifically helps fight off cancer. Hmm. I thought that was pretty uh, just notable that it helps battle cancer. So those are some pretty amazing uh, physiological things. I know we're reading scripture and somebody might say, ah, that's that old book, 2,000 years old. Here's modern day evidence that supports what evidence. that book is saying. Uh, in, in chapter 15, verse 13, it says, a merry heart makes for a cheerful countenance. Hmm. Right? Now, who would you rather deal with in your day which I know coppers deal with people. You're you're there in their worst moment. You're there in the worst moments of people's lives, and a lot of times, you know, you're not showing up on on the job where people are cheerful. As a matter of fact, now they may be cheerful. You're there, but again, they may not be cheerful. You're there because you got to deal with them. Well, my translation says a glad heart makes a cheerful face. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So when you're not dealing but with by those, sorrow of heart, mm-hmm. the spirit the is The spirit crushed. is broken. There's the sorrow, the stress, yep. the cortisol, right? That's right. Saying that the spirit is crushed. Yeah, the spirit is crushed. And, and I would dare say that's probably a lot of times how we get officers who start struggling uh, past a healthy point. Right. Uh, because they they can't find, they, they've been inundated by uh, the effects of life on other people or even in their own life. I've had officers say that. I couldn't get happy. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I always think, what a tormented place to be in. Yeah. Where you, you 
I, some, for somebody to say, I could not get happy. I, I, I couldn't just make myself, couldn't make get, myself happy. get happy. I couldn't find a place. Nothing was funny. Nothing made me laugh. Nothing. Uh, that's a big sign. Right. Mm, yeah, that's a big sign. If you can't find something to laugh about or something to find some form of joy in, you're in trouble and you need to ask for help. You need to cry out for help. Right. Um, the, the 15th verse of that same chapter 15 says, all the days of the afflicted are evil. In other words, it's not saying every day is evil to them. It's saying the outlook mm-hmm. of a person who's afflicted, everything's bad. You ever mm. met somebody like that? Yep. Again, Eeyore, right? <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Eeyore? Uh, it's yeah. bad. Uh, it's not good. Yeah. If you have an officer on your team right now that every day that they can't find anything good, they're in trouble. Yeah. You better pay attention to that. Yeah. On the other hand, you might have somebody on your team that finds a, something funny or something joyful about every day. You better hang around with that guy or gal because they're well, going to help your yeah, life. Folks naturally gravitate toward them. Yeah. That's who you want on your runs. That's exactly They right. often de-escalate situations as well. Yeah. You know? Bring a little bit of humor into the to the <laughs> to the discussion. <laughs> to the chaos. And it kind of diffuses what's going on. Yeah. Sometimes. Do you have any? Uh, now I, I don't do this often, but I will today. You, you wouldn't happen to have a good story about something like that, would you? Well, you know, <laughs> I've got plenty of dark humor stories. Yeah. I don't think. Well, we don't want to go to too share. dark. Right? No, don't. I have uh, some too. We don't need to go there. I can tell you my well. <laughs> I could tell you my possum story. <laughs> Your possums. But it's not the most. Ju- Here we go. <laughs> back to the hillbilly. <laughs> Clap it. <laughs> so I could tell you that. And there's a, there's a, a fellow officer, other officers who would remember it. But we got dispatched one night. We worked in an area. I won't name it. But we worked in an area that was known to be rather. Um, <laughs> <laughs> rather crispy. Rather uh, rednecky. Yeah. Let's say that. Okay. And uh, uh, a little backwoodsy, and uh, which was a great place to work. It was, it was there was something humorous, something to laugh at every day. Wow! Um, give you one example. Got sent on a run. Went and was knocking on the. This will give you a flavor for the environment. Okay. Went and knocked on the door. We were doing a notification <coughs> of some kind or something like that. Knocked on the door. It was the middle of the night, working late shift, and. Uh, standing no lights on or anything because we're knocking on this door you know don't know what we're going to be interacting with or whatnot but i kept hearing a sound at the at, toward my boots uh down on the ground like a rustling around i couldn't figure out what it was and i finally nobody was coming to the door i finally turned my flashlight on and it was a goat it was a goat chained to a fence <laughs> that was peeing on my boots a goat was peeing <laughs> on your boots marking his territory yeah yeah, so oh, that was the kind of the area that we were working in. Must so. have been a little goat. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, we got dispatched one night. Uh, this 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 fellow officer will remember this clearly. So we got dispatched one night on a. Uh, it was a run that a lady had called in because there was a possum in her basement. Which isn't a normal police run. Right. But she had a possum in her basement. This is going to hurt my face. Which, uh, so uh, with that, um, you know, we were like, hey, that's not really a police run. Call right. animal control, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah, don't be calling the cops for possums. It was a very, very slow night. There were no runs, very little going on on the radio. It was just one of those nights. So you couldn't kick anything up. You couldn't find anything, nothing. No cars to stop. There was just nothing going on. So we get this run. <clears throat> So the the dispatcher comes back on and says, "Well, no, the female caller further information advises that her son is in the is asleep in the basement and is trapped by this possum." So now it's becoming more of a police run, right? <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> me and another officer, we we mark in, we say we'll be in route, we'll go. So so wait a minute, let me get this straight. So got a lady calls in about a possum in the basement. The possum's in the basement with her son. Yeah. Who is down in the basement. Yeah, so we arrive, we get there, and it's one of those deals where you walk in and then there's a, a, a doorway that goes straight down steps into the basement. And the door's open, and she's pointing into the basement. Can't even talk about it. No, Just, she is in fear, right? <laughs> so we're thinking, good grief, what is the deal? So the officer... Like a 100-pound possum down there. <laughs> so the 
officer that I'm with, I said, won't you go down there and check that out? I'll talk right. to her. And he says, mm-mm. <laughs> I'm not going down there. There's a possum, right? <laughs> That's right. So, anyways, we finally start looking down the in there. killer possum. Shining lights and whatnot. And there's a her son who is asleep. I think he's on the couch or bed or something. Yeah. And then the possum. So, you did see was the possum. Beyond him. Yes, yes. The possum the was down there. The lights of the possum. Right. So, uh, he the other officer wouldn't go down in there. So, anyways, we finally go down and get the wake the boy up. <laughs> get the boy up out of the basement. Close the door, right? Right. So now it's back to you got a possum in your basement, but your son has been rescued, right? <laughs> has been so, saved. Yeah. So uh, so we do that. We hit in on the radio. Now, the officer that I was with, his radio number was 369. Right. So he'll remember this. And uh, <laughs> so um, it's slow. Nothing going on. It's right. a funny run. So we finally hit in. and. I make a comment about, you know, 369 has rescued the child from the possum, you know. And uh, so he was able to rescue the child and trap the possum, you know. So the dispatcher hits in and says, clear. And he and he calls the other officer. He says, Master Trapper 369. Yeah, Master Trapper. Right? So I immediately hit in and say, he's not a trapper, he's a baiter. So he immediately hits back and <laughs> oh says, clear, God. Master Baiter okay. 369. So there's oh, your humor and Lord. your laughter. Now, yeah. Every officer right now is probably, <laughs> they just spilled coffee on themselves laughing. Yeah. They doubled over. So that became a lasting memory. For lasting me. memory. And then, of course, the dispatcher, he did, you know, as soon as he said it, he realized what he said and what he fell for. <laughs> yeah, and he started. And, uh, <laughs> ah, and, that, and, that, and that even gets funnier when you're trying That's to recover. That's exactly right. And, you, and most yeah. officers remember back in the day, then everybody started keying their mics and clicking yeah. them and everything else, which was their, <laughs> their uh, applause. Yeah, their applause. <laughs> That's awesome. Their way of saying, well done. Yeah, the yeah. good and faithful servant, <laughs> the possum killer. Yeah. Oh, my but again, gosh. a nice break, nice yeah. laughter, right? Yeah. yeah. And a great way to to break the monotony and often the stress of the job as well. Absolutely. But you know, every officer has tons of crazy stories. That's why everybody likes to hang around officers off duty or at the party or at the barbecue or whatever, nice. and they want them to tell them cop stories, yeah. right? Because oftentimes. Yeah. They want to hear all the bad things, but they also find all the humor that gets hilarious built in with things. It, right? Hilarious yeah. things. things that you. What we always say: you couldn't make that up, right? What What people think up to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That then, and and isn't it amazing that? I think that's my first time telling publicly that story. My story there. The possum story. <laughs> I almost heard banjos. <laughs> I don't know. It was yeah. just like. Yeah. I got. I, I had a in, just envisioned there while you were telling that story, him riding on the hillbilly uh, truck <laughs> uh, with the Clampets. Yeah, that That's was hilarious. good times though. Good times. <clears throat> that makes work go by well too, doesn't it? Helps make the night and the shift yeah. go by, right? Yeah. And you know, I think here again, I think there's value in that. You know, you do think though. You know, we're in a day and an age where we tried to do everything we can to drive that out of the profession. Yeah. Not we as officers, but, but others. And make know. it so stressful. That That's exactly right. Again, then you start having critical struggles. Officers start having more struggles. It's like uh, one of the reasons I always say one of the greatest cop shows. I'm not big on cop shows. I don't right. like watching them. Yeah. You know, that's. Well, most of well, it's made up anyway. Well, the last thing real. you want to do is watch something about what you're doing what you all do every, day yeah. and night long anyways. And by the way, I hate watching preachers on TV. There you TV. go. There you go. They, they treat them the same always in every story so uh but i always say one of the greatest cop shows the most realistic cop shows there are there is is andy griffith oh yeah now people say well what that's some old black and white comedy yeah. show making fun of policing and different things through barney and all but i'm going to tell you something <laughs> they made a great it's uh, it's very realistic and, and it's the most watched and loved that's right of all of them because it builds in the humor and the funny yeah. side of everything, yeah. you know, and uh, and there's a lot of great teaching and training points. In awesome that. lessons about life. That's exactly right. I love the earlier ones too. Yeah, where he really taught Opie. Yeah, a lot of great lessons about character and people's lives, but also just using it off of 
the policing the policing and what he yeah. does yeah and barney's misfits oh you can't yeah I mean, you just can't beat barney <laughs> five it's hilarious there's a guy um you know about him and, and because of our dear friend bill westfall but there's a guy who does a comedic routine he looks and acts just like barney five that is right yeah and uh he travels around travels and, and does uh the yeah. five yeah yeah it's awesome. Yeah, totally really cool. awesome. You know, and I think for most coppers, they would say, "Yeah, man, that's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's a great show." But uh, but that's why, know. right? Building in the humor. <clears throat> well, I want to say to uh, not only to officers that are watching, but also to families mm-hmm. of those officers, get them somewhere to laugh. Yeah, find ways of 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 making your officer laugh. Uh, I know sometimes because of the additional stress that comes into family life and things of that nature and can create some friction. Um, there's lots of things you want them to do and, and things that you can point out that they haven't been doing or they haven't done. But listen, take time to laugh. Take time to have some fun together. Just like you did, get away with yeah. your spouse. Now see, I you could have taken time make off of work and then just stayed home. Yeah. But then you're not getting away. You don't get rest. And you're in your normal routine, your no, normal environment. You. We wouldn't yeah. have sat and played cards and no. dominoes and laughed and done all those things. And and I even... Oh, well, you know what else we did? We watched old movies. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, man. We sat love that. Vicky and I Couldn't get that. up, move yeah. around, so sat and watched old black and white movies, old television shows. That's awesome. Things that we would have not normally have done. Right. We did. <clears throat> and uh, just... And you know when we... When we came back home, that's one of the things that we talked about was I really enjoyed yeah. this and that, and they were things that we wouldn't have normally have done back home. And, you know, you and I, we converse a lot daily yeah, a lot of times. But when I know you're on vacation. Yep, likewise. I, yeah. I just, once I know those, I don't, I don't bother you. If you say something to me, I'll reply. But other than that, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, because I want you to get rest. Yeah. Too. I know the load. Um, that yeah. you carry daily, and it's heavy. And I want you to be. You're my friend. I want you to be rested up. And well, we talked strong. about laughter and joy yeah. and getting away. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, that you also were away. That you got away as well. Well, I was trying to and just get through this you, podcast. Hey, you brought it up. Out. I um, did not. You, you just no, did. No, you did. You said you were away oh, and you were fishing. Here we go. Now, I remember that on previous episodes, you you're had a big to, trophy. You're supposed to make me laugh. It was like this now high. You, now you're trying that to we had sitting here. hurt my Remember feet. that? Oh, I remember. So, you went fishing again. So, you got We, we had the away. tournament. It's Look, a, it, we do it every year. So, it was the same tournament for the big same trophy. Same tournament for the big trophy. Well, where's the trophy? Well, it's at the home or the desk. Oh. Of the the person who won it, ah, and that person was not me and my partner this, this time. This year, oh my! So you had to hand the trophy off. Painfully so. Mm. Was there uh, any laughter when that occurred? By everybody else, <laughs> <laughs> there was laughter because because they're like, the, listen, you have to realize this trophy probably cost fully. Probably like five dollars and nine cents. Yeah, right. Because it's a it's a four by four post. post. Yeah, I with a, it. with a one by it's stained. Nicely, yeah, with a though. one by ten platform. Yeah, yeah, it's stained nicely. It's yeah. got a little fish bass on top and two little and nameplates. But and nameplates, which we have three. So this is an annual and our fishing nemesis tournament. has four. Uh oh. Now five? <clears throat> now five. Oh. Mm. On the trophy. Oh, and he never fails to let you know that. Mm. But we've been doing this tournament. It's a bunch of preachers that get together. We've been doing this tournament for the, almost 30 years. So Wow. Now, I have to say this. Boats. The idea of a bunch of preachers getting together doesn't sound like there'd be much laughter. Brother, we laugh so hard. <laughs> we We... That's part of the reason we do it. Yeah. Because we don't get together and talk about church. This is why. Yeah. And I don't get this wrong, but this is why I don't take a bunch of people with me that are going to ask me a bunch of questions. Right. <clears throat> Same way with cops. When right? I go fishing, I, I don't I, I don't take people. If you get on my boat 
and you start talking about all the problems of church and community yeah. and, and, and all the stuff we do that You're I'm not, I'm not taking that. you again. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm there to fish. I'm not there to talk about the world's problems. Yeah. Now there have been times I've been out fishing where the Holy spirit has told me to troll over and talk to somebody on another boat. Mm-hmm. And I've led people to Christ out on the lake. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. I'll tell you, can I tell you a story real quick? I had a, I was fishing this little bay, this little cut, and as I came around the cut, a guy came into Does it. Does this involve a trapper or a baiter? No, 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 no. This was oh. just a fisherman. Oh, okay. And he's Baiting fish, his hook. He's fishing uh-huh. the bank I just got through fishing on the other side, and the Holy Spirit said, "Go over there and talk to him. He needs prayer." And I'm like, "Lord, I'm fishing. You know, you're going to talk to God, the great fish. I'm fishing." He said, "You do what I said." Go over there and talk to him. So I just turned my troll motor, went over there, and I said, hey, buddy, um, I know you don't know me. I'm not going to tell you anything about fishing. Looks like you got that down pretty good. But while I went around that side, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said uh, to come just say hey to you and that you need prayer. And this guy broke instantly into sobs, Mm -hmm. kneeled down in his boat, to keep from falling out of his boat, Mm. shaking. And he said, you're not going to believe this. And I'm going to try to tell a story of that crying because it's still the day touches my heart. come on. He said, I lost my brother this morning. Mm. And he said, I just came around the point. And I said, Lord, if you are real, if there's just any way you could help me right now because my, you know, his brother just died. Right. Now, what's the odds? Just think about this. What's the odds? Well, I love when people ask that. My wife and I talk about this. We say this to each other all the time. What are what were the odds with God? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That he would just I would be in that bay. He would be in that bay, and I got to go over there and speak life, speak into life his into him, mm-hmm. into his situation, and pray for him. Yep. Just. One of the most beautiful moments. Well, we talked about earlier with the doctors. That's God working through you. That's right. You know, that's the thing I keep trying to remind our officers of, but everybody of, right? Is we always want God to move and some miracle and all these other things. And God has us here. Listen, that's right. To work through us with other folks. God is moving, but he's going to do it through you. That's right. So. When it comes to fishing, I love to fish, but with a bunch of preachers, it's a hoot. We don't, you know, we don't look to get away to become ungodly. Sure. Even though we're fishing and competing against each other. Uh, no, we, but right. we have a, we have fun. Something funny it's a always. Yeah. Something hilarious always happens. That's why we need to do an R&R fishing episode. We do. Um, I'd do so it I would ask this, so if anybody stayed long enough all the way to the end here, I would ask this of our faithful viewers, uh, what would they think if we ever did an R&R gathering just like this? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a ton of people, yeah. but even if you just had a group of folks that got together, maybe you did a little, I don't know, maybe you did a little fishing. Yeah. Maybe a little bonfire time. Or a bonfire, yeah. Just yeah. sat yeah. around time together. in fellowship. but yeah. uh, we talked about Talk about the do issues a live of live R and R. There you yeah. go. There you go. I'd and, love and to do that. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be. Hey, by the way, we had a, a viewer that reached out to me that said how much they love the lion yeah. uh, picture back here, and uh, were, they were asking if we could do something with it or point them in the direction of that. But that's just a that's just a photo or a, yeah, or, or I should say a painting or whatnot that you have uh, for in yep. here. Uh, I don't know what's buzzing, but I don't either. Um, but um, uh, they pointed that out and how much they love that. Now, one thing I would say is someday I think it would be awesome if we had some big R and R logo back here. Well, that's uh, that's the plan, right? We'd yeah. love to have an R and R steel, maybe yeah, logo uh, maybe with a light behind like it, the welded yeah. kind of cut out yeah. thing, yeah. Or laser cut yeah, or whatever. Laser cut be awesome. Maybe put our uh, Star Wars lights, as some people be, say, yeah, the I'd red and the blue that. back behind yeah. it or something. But what would be cool Super is cool. that blue line 
that helps form that cross in the opening in logo. In the opening maybe. logo. That'd yep. be awesome. I love that logo. But yeah, somebody uh, reached out and said how much they really enjoy that oh, awesome. and love that. And well, we are. Whatnot, so. Yeah. They're, they're, they're intense. Look at that face and those eyes. The Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah. Well, thank you, my friend. That's well, a good refreshing thing to hear about is the value of laughter and joy. Yeah. Uh, it really is possible. I think a lot more people find that joy comes from being in this word and finding out that there is a God who created them, That's that right. loves them, and wants them to be happy and, and Je- joyful. And Jesus said, my joy will be full in you. There so you go. You find Jesus, you find joy. There you go, man. All right, man. Bless That's you. good stuff. That is. Hey, subscribe. Hit the bell. Listen, if you have a funny story, now, <laughs> dark humor and all, but if you have a funny story that you would like to send in to us, we, we never mention names, just yeah. like you heard him. He didn't say anybody's name. But we love stories, too. And, uh, hey, one might oh, find its way on the podcast. 369 so. will know <laughs> oh, who three. was being And I know about. who 369 <laughs> is. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great old possum man. Yeah, yeah. He's not a master trapper. Nope, not a master trapper. We right. bless you. We love you. God bless you today. We'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Rick and I trust that you heard something that will help your life. And if you believe that it would help others, please make sure and share. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next podcast is available. God bless you and we'll see you soon.